Hi, I'm Dr. Scholz. Let's talk about prostate cancer. We're in the middle of a series about prostate cancer staging. At the PCRI, we have a staging guide, and we're loosely following the format in here. In this video, we're going to cover low royal. We have five different stages of prostate cancer, each subdivided into three subtypes, low, basic, and high. Today's video is about low royal. Low royal is an advanced, royal is the most advanced stage, so low royal is an advanced stage of prostate cancer. And low royal is defined as a man who was indigo, who's been on hormone therapy, Lupron for example, for usually many years, but now even with a low testosterone, the PSA is starting to rise. Just for review, basic and high royal are men that have scans showing cancer outside the pelvic region in the bones. Basic royal, five or fewer metastases. High royal, six or more metastases. So low royal is without metastasis, except perhaps some enlarged lymph nodes in the pelvic region. It's defined as royal because of the resistance to Lupron and its uh, other cousins such as Eligard and Firmagon, Zolodex and the like. Resistance to the best available therapy, which is hormone therapy, is a very serious development with prostate cancer. And that is why this category qualifies as royal and not one of the earlier stages. Untreated men go on to develop metastasis in the bones after about an average of 18 months. This is a very serious development and the advent of metastasis needs to be prevented with appropriate therapy. Historically, there's been no treatment for this category and doctors have often reassured their patients that it's okay to have a rising PSA and not take any immediate action. That, of course, is a big mistake. Why would people think that it's okay? Well, many of men have been in remission for as long as 10 or more years and nothing's happened. Fears related to cancer have been dissipated. But the rising PSA with a low testosterone is a signal that things are changing quickly and something must be done. So what can be done? It turns out that modern second generation hormonal therapies such as Extandi, Erlita, and there's a new medicine coming out called Daralutamide, can delay the onset of metastasis for about two years. That's a healthy amount of time, considering that these medicines have relatively few side effects, if any, beyond what the Lupron's already causing. The studies have been done that show this delay in the onset of metastasis with these medications are very high quality studies, randomized prospective trials. What's interesting though, is that at the research centers where these studies were done, the men had fairly high PSA levels, even though their scans were clear. The average PSA was in the eight to 10 range. Men can be detected with Lupron resistance at much lower PSAs, less than one, easily. Men who get on treatment earlier do even better. So if we can get an average two year delay in metastasis with someone starting with a PSA of eight to 10, there's probably gonna be much longer remissions in men that start earlier. In our own practice, we've seen men go on medicines at PSAs less than one, and some of them have remained in remission for years and years, and there's no sign of them progressing at all. So it's clearly important to identify this subcategory of low royal and get on the right treatment. When you hear doctors talking about low royal, the common terminology is M0. M0 means M for metastasis, zero means no visible metastasis in the bones. So it's important to remember that even though the scans are all clear, we're talking about a very serious stage of prostate cancer. Men who don't get treatment in a timely fashion are going to develop bone metastasis after an average of 18 months. This can be prevented with modern new agents. Men who have rising PSAs who are on Lupron need to start treatment as quickly as possible.